Uh, may I come in, sir? Come in, Diban Shu. Good morning, sir. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. So, Diban Shu, you are a Delhiite. Yes, sir. What, what makes you proud as a Delhiite? Um, sir, as a Delhiite, I think uh, the capital city of this nation, the second largest GDP, and the diversity of culture. Uh, many people come from various cities, migrate here and uh, live together. So that makes me proud as a Delhiite. Anything else about Delhi also fascinates you? No. Uh, so the seat of, uh, it is a seat of power, most more important constitutional bodies like the Supreme Court, the Parliament. You know, uh, there is talk about uh, judicial overreach nowadays. Uh, yes, sir. What do you mean by judicial overreach? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, it is a concept uh, which says that uh, uh, judiciary is sometimes transgressing their domain and uh, uh, addressing issues which do not uh, actually fall into their purview. Uh, for example, recently uh, there was an incident where judiciary uh, banned sale of liquor within the 500 meter vicinity of highways. So that uh, sometimes by some experts is said to be a case of judicial overreach. Dibhan should tell me who is supreme? The judiciary or the executive or the legislature, who is supreme really? Uh, sir, in India, we have the constitutional supremacy. Mm -hmm. All these three uh, organs are sovereign in their own domain. The executive with respect to administration, legislature with respect to lawmaking and judiciary in the uh, domain of justice. Mm -hmm. All three work together, but the constitution is supreme. Okay. Uh, you know, the uh, collegium issue has been, you know, at the forefront these days. Yes, sir. What is it about and uh, what is the problem really? Uh, yes, sir. So, the collegium issue basically talks about appointment of High Court and Supreme Court judges. As per the uh, original constitution, uh, the provision was that CGI and the President will consult to appoint judges. But with uh, developments in Supreme Court jurisprudence and the third judges case, this collegium system came out. Uh, in 1980s and uh, uh, the issue is uh, that uh, nowhere in the world judges appoint judges. So there is a lot of uh, secrecy in this process which uh, needs reforms. Needs reforms, you mean it should be made public, secrecy uh, should not be there? Uh, sir, secrecy should be there but some parts of the process can be made transparent. Okay. Yes sir. You know I was also, please, please, no, 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 please go ahead. What is the constitutional provision? So the constitutional provision says that uh, the president of India along in consultation with the chief justice should appoint uh, the judges. So basically the constitution says president has to appoint. Yes sir. Huh? And only a consultation with the supreme court uh, is needed. Yes sir. Uh, okay, we'll come to our other uh, issue because I was reading about it. <clears throat> you know, Tihar jail in yes. Delhi, you know, located in Delhi, so many prisoners are languishing there and some of them have got bail also, but they are still there because they are not able to provide securities and all that. What can be done about it? There is, there is a statement also on that. Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, uh, yes, uh, our prisons suffer from overcrowding and there are people who are under trials and who have not been uh, convicted, their cases have been going long, they do not have the money to provide for bail bonds. So, in this budget, the finance minister in 2023 has provided provision for the poor prisoners who are not able to afford bonds. The government will help them and help them get bail. Okay. Uh, information, you studied IT, yes, information sir. technology. Now, I'll ask uh, two hypothetical questions. Uh, you know, in uh, Australia, they, uh, they removed some of the CCTV cameras which are made in China. Uh, yes, sir. And they will probably remove all. It, uh, the same thing was done in uh, UK, in London also yes. some time ago. And now some people are saying, I was listening to a you know kind of a discussion on that uh, with technical people. Uh, they are saying even the phones we are using, if it is made in China, it's a danger. People who should go to, who are, who are going to or working in sensitive installations should not carry anything you know made in China. Yes, sir. Do you agree? Um, yes, sir, there have been certain apprehensions that the software contained uh, in these devices may have some technical backdoors 
which could allow the Chinese agencies to collect some sort of data or deploy malicious code, which can be uh, in case uh, detrimental to a nation's security. Okay. Uh, we'll come to the international domain very briefly. Uh, you know, we are trying to build now a, a road, actually, in fact, a 135 kilometer road uh, in Ladakh, Arunachal Pradesh, and all that. We are doing it. Sikkim. Uh, why are we doing it now? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and last two years, one or two years now, oh, it's, it's happening now. Uh, yes, sir. So, if we look uh, at that part of the border, the skirmishes with China have increased, whether it be in Galwan in 2020 or the recent uh, Tawang incursion. So, it is better if we have a robust border infrastructure, the border villages are developed, uh, so that uh, in case of any uh, mobilization of troops, we can uh, utilize that infrastructure and also for the development of that area, the people living there, it is uh, needed. Do you think it is more to do with development or for strategic reasons? Uh, so both aspects are there, but I think the strategic aspect uh, dominates. Okay. Uh, our NSA was in USA. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, what what is the purpose of the visit and what, what has been the outcome? Uh, uh, sir, is it about the ICET? Yes. The, uh, so uh, the, they signed an in, uh, initiative for critical and emerging technologies. Uh, in, in it, they have uh, engagements regarding semiconductor development, quantum computing, uh, cyber... Well, why the emphasis on that now? Uh, we were not doing it earlier. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, we were doing it earlier, but uh, right now, uh, as the security situation of uh, Indo-Pacific and the world is changing, so uh, there are, uh, like, these are critical technologies. And for uh, countries to develop capacity in them, it would be uh, critical and also emerging. So, uh, most countries do not have enough capacity. Devan, so my last yes, question sir. to you. You know, our uh, NSA, you know, he made a statement about uh, Afghan people. He says, you know, we will be always with the Afghan people. Yes, sir. You know that we don't recognize the government in Afghanistan. Yes, sir. But. What kind of importance you attach to this statement? Yes, sir. So, India and Afghanistan have had ancient historical relations and uh, we have always stood by the people of Afghanistan. We have uh, helped them in 2023 budget also around 200 crores are allocated as official development assistance. The parliament in Afghanistan is built by uh, Indian, uh, uh, Indian funding. So, uh, People to people ties have always been very strong and it is in the benefit because Afghanistan is a neighboring country, it is in the benefit of our strategic as well as economic interest that we have given them uh, 200 crores in yes our sir. budget also. No? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, it is in our benefit that peace prevails over there and somehow uh, democracy can be installed. Thank you, Divanch. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Divanch, we have the uh, education recent uh, new education policy yes sir what is that uh, so the new education policy was uh, launched in 2020 uh, it uh, basically uh, revamps the earlier system of education that was basically 10 plus 2 now it has basically uh, uh, preschooling before uh, pre primary in anganwadi then uh, primary schooling it is 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 uh, so that has been uh, enhanced. Other features of education policy are, uh, there is a lot of diversity, focus on vocational education, academic bank of credit, multiple entry and exit points for each uh, student. And uh, there are some uh, reforms suggested for higher education as well. It pegs that 6% uh, of GDP should be spent on education budget. And uh, uh, the gross enrollment ratio for higher education, uh, it has achieved, uh, put a target of 50% till 2035. So, which is the better policy according to you? Are the earlier 10 plus 2 or this is one key? This is 5 and then in middle, 8 yes, and then 11th and then? Uh, sir, I think the earlier 10 plus 2 was a uh, British model of education. This one is more suitable to our needs and will provide uh, better opportunities for the youth and if they want to exit at some point, say after class 10 and pursue some uh, employment, they can uh, do that better. But in this new policy, the, the, he has to clear 11th, that is high secondary, yes, 8 plus 3, yes, it sir. was earlier, 8 plus 2 plus 2. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, sir, like there will be options for them to exit at 
uh, after 11th there is no option uh, after 11th there is option but up to 11th there is no option he has to complete it and they have abolished the boards earlier it was the 10th board and then 12th board now it is only first time the student will be facing the board at the 11th okay so i am not aware mm -hmm. yes sir and the, there is a lot of gap in, from the delhi and the rest of the country in the education so do you know about something about it uh, yes sir so the education system in delhi i think uh, is better firstly mm. because central government focuses a lot we have institutions for higher education like aims and iit also in school education if we look the delhi government with their uh, uh, new curriculum has done well but if we look at remote parts of the country there are uh, learning deficiencies and uh, especially during the pandemic children have lost out on uh, learning outcomes in delhi also we have the this ad hoc teachers and temporary teachers in our days they, we used to have the regular teacher but now the ad hoc teacher for 3 years continuous 5 years 8 years uh, yes sir what is this uh, sir i am not uh, exactly aware of uh, this situation mm. but i think the government is trying to uh, make them permanent mm. in the history there is a lot of contribution by the sikh community and sikh religion maharaja ranjit singh yes sir so what was his contribution in the indian history uh, yes sir uh, sir maharaja ranjit singh uh, ruled around uh, 1850s in the region of uh, punjab amritsar and even in lahore uh, till up to the areas of lahore um, <laughs> his contribution was basically he was instrumental in fighting the british and uh, 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 so like he established a uh, uh, punjab regime uh, over there like empire, punjab empire sikh empire hmm. in that part uh, yes sir now still because this punjab problem was over in 1995 96 now the again the there is in australia and in uk and in canada so what is your opinion why this problem is coming up again uh, and yes, whether sir. the khalistan should be given or how it, to solve it yes sir so yes there are certain groups like the babbar khalsa international which have been banned by the indian government under uapa which are raising demands for khalistan uh, sir as per my opinion uh, punjab is an integral part of this nation and there is no question of secessionism or khalistan uh, a movement Uh, but uh, uh, if there are some genuine demands regarding uh, preservation of their culture and language that can be uh, heard but uh, secessionism uh, is not an option mm -hmm. and then in delhi there is a uh, problem of the solid waste management ah uh, yes sir hmm and everybody the iit chief minister is there and theoretically everybody said we will do it for the last 15 years we, we are listening ki yes we will do it and nothing has yes sir progressed no no progress in any direction yes sir so what is your opinion how to do it yes sir sir uh, in my opinion this requires a long term solution hmm. and uh, first there should be uh, the entire su supply chain of garbage and solid waste should be uh, like it needs a behavioral change for example people should segregate garbage at their home Uh, if not done uh, the government should uh, penalize them and not collect their garbage we can follow the indore model in indore it has happened that the municipality vans only collect garbage from those homes where it is segregated into dry waste and wet waste and if it is not the houses are penalized we see the results that indore is one of the cleanest cities in the country so if that model we can employ in delhi and uh, provide fine like people who are not segregating waste at source because uh, if in a collected uh, like if it is a mixed garbage and it goes to the landfill the mounds heap up it becomes very difficult to track it and it becomes unhygienic we already have three large mounds of garbage in gazipur in balsua and okla so that becomes a very environmental challenge as well as a health issue oh thank you thank you sir ah uh, divyanshu your second choice is uh, foreign service uh, yes sir very good and it is your uh, which attempt so third attempt earlier also you you qualified for uh, no sir first uh, means first interview and what was your optional 
सर एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ऑल टाइम यू चेंज योर ऑप्शन और इट वाज ऑल टाइम इट वाज ऑल टाइम एंथ्रोपोलॉजी हाउ यू हैव डन इन द रिटन एग्जामिनेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू यू सर इट इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू टेल बट आई थिंक आई हैव डन सेटिस्फैक्ट्री यू स्टैंड फेयर चांसेस टू बी इन दिस टाइम सर आई एम होपिंग बट इट इज़ अ वेरी कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन सो नथिंग कैन बी सेड फॉर नॉट वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट हंड्रेड परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंट यस सर यस सर नॉट वेरी ओके इन द बजट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड ट्वेंटी फोर वॉट आर दी बेस्ट पार्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू यू एंड वॉट इज अ प्रॉब्लम एरिया सर बेस्ट पार्ट नंबर वन इंक्रीज कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ टेन लैख करोड़ सर नंबर टू एज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी द बजट फॉर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्राइबल अफेयर्स हैज़ बीन इंक्रीज बाई सेवेंटी परसेंट वी हैव मिशन फॉर पी वी टी जी सिकल सेल अनिमिया एक लव्य स्कूल्स सर नंबर थ्री द बेस्ट पार्ट इन बजट इज इट्स फोकस ऑन ग्रीन ग्रोथ नेशनल मिशन फॉर हाइड्रोजन एंड फोकस ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज सर इफ़ वी लुक एट द प्रॉब्लमैटिक आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द बजट लाइक विच सम एक्सपर्ट्स हैव पॉइंटेड आउट एज पर माई ओपिनियन इट इज़ अ वेरी प्रूडेंट बजट बट देर आर सम इशूज फॉर एग्जाम्पल द एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस हैज गॉट अ वेरी लेस बजट इट इज़ लेस दैन वन परसेंट ऑफ आर जी डी पी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सर देर आर सर्टन कंसर्नस अबाउट मनरेगा बजट बींग रिड्यूसड बट द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज सेट दैट शी विल प्रोवाइड मोर बजट इफ नीडेड फॉर दैट स्कीम um uh, and sir uh, the only third concern i can uh, think of is the fiscal deficit uh, if uh, it has been pegged at 5.9% uh, towards the end of 2024 so uh, like there's a lot of work need to be done if you yeah. have to prioritize these uh, concerns what is number one concern uh, yes sir i think number one will be uh, fiscal deficit increasing the revenue for the government and reducing its uh, debts fiscal deficit is very uh, important huh? yes sir the most important point but why uh, sir because uh, fiscal deficit basically is an indicator of the strength of our economy that how much uh, we are earning and how much we are spending so if it is large we are spending more and earning less that could if uh, if the situation is unchecked that could in long term lead to an economic crisis what is fiscal deficit सर फिजिकल डेफिसिट बेसिकली इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन आर रेवेन्यू एंड एक्सपेंडिचर बिटवीन करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट यस सर सर करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट इन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स वी हैव करंट अकाउंट इन दैट इट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द फॉरन अर्निंग्स ऑफ अ कंट्री द अर्निंग्स दैट कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड एंड द अर्निंग्स दैट वी सेंड फ्रॉम हेयर बेसिकली आई थिंक द इम्पोर्ट्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट what are the main issues between uh, us and china uh yes they are sir. not at good terms yes sir what are the main issues uh yes sir so sir uh, as they are the number one and number two uh, economies of the world there are some insecurities as to who will uh, be a dominant power in future apart from that sir uh, uh, there the are sir, more insecurities yes sir recently sir a chinese balloon was found spying over the us mainland which was shot down by f22 so like the us has suspicions of china being spying on them uh, apart from that sir trade wars have been continuing between us and china and uh, china is closer uh, to russia in the russia ukraine war and us is supporting ukraine so there are tensions uh, regarding that also expansionist tendencies also there uh, yes sir hmm? so china's expansionist tendencies in the south china sea uh, refusing to follow the un convention of laws on sea uh, law of sea that have also uh, uh, been a cause of concern for the americans what is caa caa uh, so caa is the citizenship amendment act which was brought out in uh, 2019 why the, was it brought out Uh, so it was brought out to give uh, citizenship to uh, the uh, people of uh, like the neighboring countries three neighboring countries afghanistan pakistan and bangladesh of certain religions they were given uh, citizenship what religions and why 
सर ऑल द मेजर रिलीजन्स हिंदुज़म बुद्धिज़म द पारसीज द जैनस द सीख्स and uh, but why 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 they, they, there was uh, a lot of uh, halla gulla about it uh, yes sir that why not muslims uh, yes sir so sir basically these religions are being persecuted uh, in these three countries they are in minority thank you over there yeah. yes sir. thank you sir so related with ministry of tribal affairs in the last session of the parliament that was the winter session uh, two bills were introduced by ministry of tribal affairs can you recall which were those two Uh, sorry sir i am not aware mm. the constitutional sc st order amendment bills okay sir two bills and were passed by both the houses of the parliament anyway uh, related with it it you have studied ha huh? so what is 66a of it act section 66a of it act and why this is a new Yes, sir. Uh, so it was an uh, it was a provision which said that if there are any adverse comments on the internet regarding the government, uh, the government can uh, pull those down. So it was in news because the Supreme Court uh, declared it unconstitutional in the Shreya Singhal case, and said that uh, mere suspicion of adverseness, like the definitions regarding that, was not clear. Okay. Uh, so related with budget. Mm, uh, what is the provision which has been made related with 5G? Uh, sir, hundred labs. Hundred uh, labs. Huh? Yes, sir. And what about IT, specifically? Uh, art, uh, not IT. Uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, sir. Um, so specific exact- provision related with artificial intelligence in the budget. So exactly, I am. Uh, Three centers of excellence. Okay, sir. Hmm? Can you recall now? Yes, sir. Like uh, okay, what uh, do you mean by regenerative artificial intelligence? Sir, regenerative. Regenerative artificial intelligence. Um, sir, regenerative. Uh, uh, as per my limited knowledge, I think that uh, generative AI is something mm-hmm. where uh, an AI can generate texts, images, and uh, yeah, paragraphs yeah, yeah. on right, its right own. Right, you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so regenerative would be that without even human prompting it yeah. can relearn and uh, regenerate it uh, yeah also. you are right yes uh, semiconductors are yes, likely sir. to be produced very soon in hyderabad yes sir so by by which company um yes sir That's sir very uh, good news for uh, our country yes sir so as far as i can uh, recall i think foxconn uh, and vedanta mm, us have, based company that is um, five nm chips are likely to be produced 5 nanometer sir i am not able to uh, okay no 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 problem so we were talking about that collegium yes sir issue and you have rightly pointed out what is the provision in the constitution now whether it is at all justified on the part of the supreme court that do it quickly it should be time bound and if we send it twice uh, a second time then you will have to agree is it right on the part of the supreme court uh yes sir if we look at the time boundedness of the issue i think it is right because uh, ultimately president, president has to a point as to a point so issuing the direct uh, directions to the president we can president. say or to the government and that too to the president because president has to a point uh, yes sir so is it right on the part of supreme court um, does the president not know uh, does he uh, uh, does she does not uh, does she not know that what is the importance of all, of all this uh, yes sir uh, sir uh, it would be very difficult to say that uh, who is uh, right or wrong because uh, both are constitutional authorities and both uh, have uh, acted in uh, very maturity in 75 years of our independence and uh, the relationship between them is very delicate so there need to be wider consultation and reforms in the collegium system so that a proper procedure and standard operating procedure is laid out uh, so that such uh, uh, friction can be avoided so what that memorandum is called uh, sir uh, memorandum of uh, a meeting as i am not able to okay no call. problem uh, uh, ye one more thing now there was a judge uh, uh, sorry Uh, the collegium uh, forwarded the name of a judge who has spoken very much against the social media 
against the Muslims and the Christians. Yes, sir. And there was a petition in the Supreme Court. What did the Supreme Court say related with that? Yes, sir. Do, sir. Can you recall? In Tamil Nadu. Yes, sir. In Madras High Court. In Madras High Court. That's yes, right. Uh, Judge Madras Victoria. High Court. It happened uh, like that. So, uh, unhone kya kiya tha? Social media mein is he yes, has sir. spoken against the Muslims as well as Christians. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I think the Supreme Court had struck down that plea mm -hmm. and uh, uh, exact uh, comments of the Supreme Court, sir, I am uh, unable to recall. Ah. But they said that uh, they have been appointed as a in a fair manner as per the recommendations of the Collegium. So, uh, uh, it is the, the a judge should not be so judged. If anybody is found. Uh, I mean, uh, that something wrong has been done, it is found like that. So, then then Sup Supreme Court uh, uh, should not take any action against that. Um, sir, if there are any, um, in conduct of any judge, if there are any discrepancies or any deficiency, we have certain procedures in the constitution that can be used. So, okay, thank you. Thank you Dibyanshu, sir. wait outside for a minute. We'll call you in, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Come, come, Dibyanshu. Sit down. So, how was your interactive session with us this morning? Uh, so, it was uh, good. You liked it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, a uh, few suggestions for you which will stand you in good state. But uh, before that, just one question I had. You passed out in 2018. Yes, sir. Since then, what have you been doing? Uh, sir, for two years, I worked as a software developer uh, okay. in Bengaluru. For two years, that is, but till t that took you to, 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 to 2020. 2020. Yes, and sir. after that? After that, sir, I've been preparing. Just preparing for uh, civil services. So, first suggestion would be on Delhi. I mean, you are a Delhiite. So, Read a little about the history, you know, people uh, ask questions about the history in all the sultanates and the kingdoms that we had, uh, Delhi culture also, you know, uh, we have a kind of a composite culture here. Uh, then of course the problem areas, you know, like uh, pollution, uh, traffic issues, uh, all that, you know, you need to know. And I asked, we, I, we asked you, I think in fact about the Collegium, uh, judicial overreach. Uh, I asked you about a question about Tihar jail. In fact, there is a statement. I think some good things are happening actually now. Because, uh, you know, if we can release those people, you know, who have got their bails and, you know, they're still in jail, I yes. think they should be released, you know. Uh, then I think, uh, I think your uh, optional subject is anthropology. Yes. So, whatever notes you are reading, kindly brush them up. Maybe some basic concept should be asked because I think archaeology is also a part of, part of. Uh, anthropology. Yes, so there could be questions on archaeology. Okay. Uh, since uh, uh, no, before that, I would like to talk about <coughs> the budget, budget and economic issues. Your interview is when? So sixth March. Sixth March. So do expect questions on the budget. Because, uh, you know, although the, you know, still discussions going on, the budget. Uh, for budget, I suggest that you read uh, Mint. Mint or Economic Times, whichever you can get. Uh, then, since international, uh, I mean, international, I mean, uh, Indian Foreign Service is your second preference. I suggest that you read a few uh, topics which are of importance. One, I would say G20, obviously. Quad. Then um, uh, India, I mean the Russia-Ukraine war. Then our immediate neighborhood, you know, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, all those things, you know. Because, you know, Pakistan every day there is something or other happening. So keep track of all that. And last but not the least, I think I would suggest that uh, keep a track of foreign dignitaries visiting India around the time of your interview. Maybe when you go for your interview, the uh, G20 foreign ministers meeting would have taken place. First and second March. So, focus will be on that. And uh, US, I mean, developments in US in general, about European Union. 
so keep track of all that okay and if you have any questions for us please do ask thank you thank you all the thank best. you all good wishes all and you are having a very bright chance thank you sir hope you will come out with flying colors okay <laughs> thank you sir